And now it's time for That Gets My Goat! Was that okay, Bob? And we are moving on to other TV shows, basically, that came with this series. I don't know that... I mean, we've talked for a long time. Do people even care? I don't know if Why they care, Why I stopped but... watching Gotham? I... You could say it real quick if you want. What other shows? So there's Gotham, which is going on, another superhero-related okay. show. And there was Agent Carter... I did want to say something about Agent Carter. And there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's which Supergirl. There's ended and is starting back up. And there's Supergirl, Flash. And Arrow. And Legends and of Arrow Tomorrow. And Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow. So we'll hit on, we'll try and at least say a, a paragraph. Okay. <laughs> about each of these. In summation, Your Honor. We'll start with Gotham. Why did you stop watching Gotham? Well, I thought Gotham got really interesting in its second season. Because they brought in like a a big bad major character, and they came up with something for Bruce Wayne to do, and they came up with like an arc of his relationship and all this stuff, and I dug it, but then the show got really really grim and so violent that it made me not want to watch it anymore. And guys, you have to understand, I own all the George A. Romero zombie films. I love gore. I love violence. But it was so violent there at the end that I was bothered. Like two or three days later, I was still thinking about it and thinking, going over and over in my mind what I had seen. And I thought, you know, I, I guess I'm going to stop watching that, uh, which is too bad. But I, I don't know how you can show shit like that on network television. I, I understand that, you know, it's not the 80s anymore. And that there are TV ratings. And really the FCC or whoever runs WatchGuards, all this stuff. WatchGuard, is that a word? Yeah, I think so. Watchdogs, all this stuff, you know, only has sway until, you know, a certain hour of the night. But holy cow, it got really, really gruesome and, and, and just, yeah, mean-spirited. And I, I decided not to watch it anymore. Is that is that okay? Sure, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I never even got that far. I stopped watching it in... The early uh, episodes of the first season, we, you know, it came out and me and my family would get together and watch superhero movies and, or sorry, superhero TV shows together. We'd watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as a family, we'd watch Flash as a family, and so I thought, well, let's watch Gotham as a family. And we watched all of two, maybe three episodes, and nobody in the family wanted to keep going. They just didn't like it. There was nothing about the show that, that made them want to keep watching. And so we quit it. And, you know, we didn't have to wish we could quit it. We just did. Okay. It wasn't one of those love affairs that you can't give up, for sure. Okay, and so... we haven't gone back. And yeah, maybe you will want to watch them, you know, a bunch in a row by yourself on Netflix. Because the show gets pretty good... Once it, it realizes what it wants to be. But I just, yeah, it went too far for me. And, and the, I understand that Gotham City is a really corrupt place and that it corrupts good people and all that. But I felt like I was being corrupted by it, too. And I just, I, I had to stop watching. You were a good person at one point. Never. Not at all. Now you're corrupt. Ask my parents. Not, another show uh, that we've been watching is, uh, in fact, we talked about it. Let's talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you and I are probably caught up, right? About the same place on Agents uh, of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've seen the f only the first episode since the hiatus. So I've seen the episode with Maja in it. Sorry, it's not Maja. She has a different name, but she's from Colombia. Oh, okay. <laughs> Super fast blink girl or whatever. I don't know that she has a comic book analog or not, if she was just made up for the show. But this woman who can run really fast... As far as she can go in one heartbeat. And then she mm. snaps back like a yo-yo. It was interesting because I didn't expect the way they would go with it. You know, they had them at the start take down a convoy of police and steal all their guns. And you think, oh, these are bad people, whoever they are. And they turn out to not be that. They're trying to keep the very corrupt police from uh, being armed to the teeth like they would be otherwise, and they're stealing their guns and just dumping them in the river, which is littering. But uh, <laughs> Not in Colombia, man. <laughs> but yeah. it was cool. It was cool to see them do that. It's been a really good show. I think we probably talked about... Did we ever do a show about the, the season that 
the first half of the season leading up to you know them going to planet x or battle yeah. world or wherever that was that they went to and the blue sky world the day for night world <laughs> right we didn't we talked about the first season then we did a second season episode we didn't talk about the third season uh, but it, it consistently good show i thought in the third season yeah. and you haven't seen what i think has been the best episode of the third season which is a time travel sort of episode where there's oh. a guy who has the power when he touches you to show you the future oh. and so he touches somebody at the very beginning of the episode in the teaser and then we see how that plays out and then he touches sky and she sees what's going to happen in the rest of the episode and we all get arguments among the team of whether you can change the future whether that's fate whether that's going to happen and oh my goodness it was fascinating because they showed bad things happen and it's like well how do we avoid having that well don't go to the place where this happens that will keep that from happening and it's like well but obviously I go there because I saw it in a vision. You know what I mean? It's like, is there destiny? Can you, it, you know, can you stop uh -huh. that? Oh, it was really, really cool. And uh, a couple of time travel things that I had never, I mean, it's not real time travel. It was just, you got a vision of the future and now do everything you can to make that not come true, mm -hmm. which I thought was really fun. And uh, the, the, the fact that they can have, like people who had a bit part in one of the other Marvel Cinematic Universe movies and do a whole episode where they're a, a central character. I love that. I think it's just great. One of the major villains in this third season is a guy who had like four lines in The Avengers. And he's a, he's in almost every single episode as a mastermind that, villain. And what's his face? Uh, big head and honcho from... Uh, the World Security Hydra, Council. Yeah, that was on the World Council. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, I, I can't wait for you to see that episode and tell me, oh, I, yeah, I loved it. Or, oh, you oversold yeah, that. you were wrong. Time travel is lame. It's <laughs> yeah. It's not time travel. Shield, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is one of those shows that's consistently good, and uh, it's really enjoyable. Now, we talked before we ever came on the air, and this has actually been a couple of weeks now that since we said this, but there was also Agent Carter who had her hiatus show, you know, when S.H.I.E.L.D. goes on hiatus, then Agent Carter appears in their place. And this time around, instead of being six episodes, like it was last year, it was ten. Which automatically is going to be bad for you, because anytime something gets longer, uh, you don't like it. <laughs> With good reason, <laughs> folks. And so you said you really didn't like this, this year's Agents, or Agent Carter. And you said that when you went back and saw Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again, and you saw the first episode, you're just like, man, there was... The first episode had so much more to it than all then of the episodes. episodes of Agent Carter did. Now, yeah, in that case, just because I have seen that episode, I think you oversold it a little bit. That first episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was good, but I don't know if it can go as far as that. Uh, also, I was somewhat distracted watching that episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I was also trying to modernize We Didn't Start the Fire mm -hmm. at the same time as watching that show, so I did miss probably some of the intricacies of it. But anyways, talk about Agent Carter. Yeah, okay. 1989, Ghostbusters 2 comes out. Roger Ebert, in his review, said, Ghostbusters 2 was as bad as Ghostbusters 1 was good. I never forgot that quote. 25 years later, it still bounces around in my little head. Agent Carter season <laughs> two was as bad as Agent Carter season one was good. I will never watch another minute of Agent Carter. I wish I hadn't watched Agent Carter season two. The first episode, the first season was fine and it was good. And it was, yeah, the more adventures to be had. I really enjoyed it. I don't know what happened in season two, man. I didn't enjoy it at all. Oh my gosh, when there was the dance number, I was <laughs> looking around and it's like, is this, are they really doing that? It, it's all just to fill time, guys. And oh, <laughs> yikes, I hated that was, it at all. My wife, when the dance number came on, said, wow, it's too bad the show isn't like this every week. I would really like it then. No, she wouldn't. <laughs> that show was not, 
Yeah, and she looked up from her cross stitching or whatever she was doing <laughs> for the eight minutes in which they sang and did a Busby Berkeley dance number, and then she went back to what she had been doing all the other episodes. And didn't watch any more of it. I have to say I liked that little segment because Haley Atwell looked probably the hottest that she looked in the whole show in that. <laughs> if you dance say so, number. I Oh boy, I didn't Shazam. like it. I, I, yeah, I just I wish I had skipped all of that. Because in a way it sullied the first season for me, because I'll always remember Agent Carter as being this sixteen episode show or whatever, mm-hmm. instead of just this it really won't be like Firefly where it had the perfect 13 episodes and <laughs> you, you never get it sullied it's it, it went on too long for you i didn't dislike it uh nearly as much as you did i don't know if it was as good or if it wasn't as good what i kind of was disappointed with and i and from what i understand the show's not coming back it's not going to be back next year all the people that were in the show have been signed on to other shows Haley atwell's on to some other tv show now mm. um and everybody else, you know, they, they, they don't have contracts for them to come back and do anything more. And uh, apparently it's over. So you can, I guess, be glad you never will even have to decide whether you want to watch another minute of the show. Interesting. But the one thing that I was kind of upset with, and, you know, they, they did their thing and they had a little adventure, which is cool. But the thing about Agents... Or, uh, damn that. It's hard to do. The two shows having the same word, it's really difficult to, to not say it right. I mean, to say it right instead of not saying it right. But yeah, the thing about Agent Carter is it's a prequel. Also a sequel, but it's a prequel. It's, you know, what led up to S.H.I.E.L.D. And we see in Winter Soldier, they go down into that computer bunker where uh, Emil Zola... Ar- 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 Arnim Zola, sorry, I knew that didn't sound right. Arnim Zola's brain was kept all these years. And as they're going in, you see, you know, like the founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you got Howard Stark, and you got Peggy, and you got whatever the character was. That Tommy Lee Jones That Tommy played. Lee Jones played, the, the soldier, who we never see in Agent Carter. Which, that is one of those cameos which we should see. I know... Tommy Lee Jones is surely way above their price point. But uh, we need to make some sort of headway towards the founding of S.H.I.E.L.D. The whole time it's the strategic something Something reserve. reserve. Or the something strategic reserve. SSR anyways. Not the USSR. And you see that there's... Especially in this season, there's all sorts of problems with this agency. You've got uh, the guy from that 70s show coming in and, like, trying to, uh, you know, stop them from looking into the things that they shouldn't look into. And I'm the, you know, the evil bad guy, bureaucrat dude. And it seems like that was the perfect opportunity for them to be like, oh, yeah, this is, this whole thing needs to be shut down and we need to start something new, you know, but they don't, they, they don't even mention, they don't go there. They just skip it altogether. And now it sounds like they're never going to go there because the show's dead. Uh, as far as I can tell. But um, the season two was so divorced from any of the Marvel cinematic universe in a way that first season was not, there were all these references to Captain America and, to the war, and you see Arnim Zola in the last episode, and, you know, it felt like it had some kind of connection. And, I, in fact, I believe the showrunners might have been, or the, the guys that wrote the pilot, the guys that wrote Captain America. Am I am I crazy for remembering it that way? And this one, it really felt like it was trying to distance itself. I mean, there, there was no mention of any of that stuff, really. It wanted to break off and be its own thing. But why? Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just more of that thing that we just finished complaining about, where these are the same universe. It needs to be obvious. And I guess this is the one show that really could just be like, no, hell, we're in 1945, 46, whatever, 47 maybe. You know, we don't have to worry about what the hell's happened in 2016, so we can do our own thing if we want to. But why? Why would you put yourself in the same universe and then not find ways 
to at least give a wink at the audience every now and then. You know, you talked about the dance number and how you hated it. I was so expecting Chris Evans to show up in that thing. If there was ever a chance they had to give him a cameo, oh, that was it. He totally should have been there, come out in his uniform and done a little song and dance. Captain America was like, oh, doing his in punch Hitler <laughs> in the face or something and knock him out. What? Oh, he, there was the perfect chance for that but again the, obviously it's probably way above their price point or whatever i get but do, do they even try like I, I saw this interview with all the people that they could get to go to a, a convention in like chicago or something like that that worked on civil war and worked on avengers and all that stuff and, and they asked them you know how many of you would be interested in you know doing an episode of agents of shield and the only one that had any interest at all was Jeremy Renner. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, because I, I come from TV. That would be great. I think that'd be cool. And they said, have they ever asked any of you guys? And, and unanimously, they all said, no. No, they've never asked. And it's like, well, how? How do you not? It's like, holy cow. I, I, well, maybe they expected maybe they expected, to say no like they did. Like, maybe they need to get Jeremy Renner in there since he's the one that says he will. Yeah, there you go. Anyhow, with the missed opportunity on Agent Carter, in the back of my mind, I thought, you know what would be so great is if Winter Soldier showed up and blew <laughs> one of these guys away. You don't even have to have Sebastian Stan play him because he has that mask and, he, you know, yeah, and all that. And I was just like, oh, you know how cool that would be. And she doesn't know, you know, that this is a guy that's significant 80 years in the future, 70 years in the future and all that. Oh, I, stuff like that where... Like having Arnim Zola show up in the last scene of the first season, it's one of those where you're like, oh, it felt like a reward uh -huh. that you watch all of the the, the shared universe stuff. And uh, there are other characters and lots of, you know, all of the Howling Commandos and stuff that they introduced in Captain America and they had, would be alive in that time. And yeah, just like, they why had them in season one when they went to... Russia or wherever it was that they went to find out where uh, Black Widow's grandma came <laughs> from or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this season they didn't do anything like that. And the only ones you got was Howard Stark and Jarvis. And Howard Stark, I really felt it in the second season. It felt like they could afford him for three episodes. Yeah. Uh, Dominic Miller, is, is, is that his name, Dominic... Cooper, that's his name. <laughs> Dominic Miller, Sting's guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic Cooper is so expensive that we can only afford him for three episodes. So the rest of the time, we're just going to say he's off doing something else, which I guess is fine if you can't have him on all the episodes. But it just, yeah, I felt like a lot of that stuff was just like, well, yeah, we can't do this. But like even things that they did in the first season, like the whole rampant sexism against Agent Peggy Carter, I felt like that was all but absent in the second season. And, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not at old enough to know what life would really have been like in 1948 for a woman in her position. But, the you other... know, there was another aspect that they introduced in the second season, and they touched on it in one sentence in one episode. And I would have enjoyed seeing a little bit of that, just of how times are different and how somebody whose mind is or life is as progressive as Peggy Carter's would take life in 1948. But I, I felt like they were pulling their punches on that. What did you think? Yeah, the, the, the fact that they would put in a mixed race romance and not, I don't know, there was like no backlash or no you know there should should have been a ton it would think i would think at the time this is well pre civil rights and you would think that there would be all sorts of people saying oh you can't do that he's not welcome i don't know stuff in 1978 would there would have been yeah. people that were upset about it let alone 1948 i i don't it was just weird that they didn't say because uh, they made a choice in casting and i felt like they all but ignored that choice through the whole thing. <laughs> right. Because if you cast a certain actor for the part, you had a reason for doing it. Throw some light on it. Have it have story repercussions and dialogue and address it and 
point out how idiotic racism is. I was going to say was, but is and all that stuff instead of just having it being out of nowhere and unaddressed. Yeah. All right, so you're never going to watch Agent Carter again, but well, they're never going to have a chance another yeah. Agent Carter. So that's that. But you know, they I guess they could flash back again on Agents of Shield if they wanted to to show other things like that. I just I didn't know that it had bad enough ratings that they decided not to do a third. I, yeah. I don't know what the deal was behind. That's just what I've heard. And there I, is going to be another hiatus show. Yeah. Uh, you knew about that, right? Uh, is that what... And I uh, believe it's called Most, Most Wanted. Wanted. Yeah, Marvel's Most Wanted. And That's and you're about two episodes show? away from the backdoor pilot of that show. So you will, oh, you'll okay. see what's going on there. All right. So that's our new hiatus show. We'll talk about that, I guess, next year. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. I, I think those are some likable characters. and uh, I just want them to call her Mockingbird. Just yeah, it's time. weird that they don't. Just Instead of just calling her Bobby but uh, or Bob. Yeah, if they could get Renner in one episode of Most Wanted, step in there and have obviously have some kind of history with Bobby Bob. <laughs> and, and have... Hunter feel really, really jealous or really threatened about it. I, I think I would enjoy that, but it's like having Howard Stark. If they can only afford Jeremy Renner for one episode, they've got to come up with the most effective use for his time. Yeah. And I'm still pipe dreaming because they're not even going to try. Right. Okay, so what other shows did we mention? There's Flash. Flash is consistently good. Consistently good. I, there have been a couple episodes that have been less than great. But yeah, I and just... there's a few characters that are less than great. I I, oh. I think yeah. Let's mention a character. I think just... when we did our la the last time we mentioned Flash, I'm sure I had to have complained at least a little bit about Iris, who was just so damn unlikable in uh, the earlier seasons. How what season are we on? Two? Is it We're just only two? on season two. Okay, right so now. in the first season. Iris was just awful. She was so unlikable. Everything that happened, she took it in the worst way. She never understood that people were looking out for her, that they were trying to protect her. She never once looked at things from somebody else's point of view. She always got offended at whatever little thing it was. Um, she was just unlikable. And, and and for the most part, know. I didn't, I didn't have that problem with Iris <laughs> most of the part, time. There were a couple of times when I was like, oh, but I would be angry at the writers. I wouldn't be angry okay. at Iris. But you know, but, the the thing with Iris that was hard was you know that Flash is absolutely in love with her, and you know also early on you see like the Gideon or whatever it was that shows you that she's called Iris. West Allen or Allen West or however they hyphenate it, you know that they're going to end up together and you're just like, why would he go with, oh, she's so awful. <laughs> and whatever they gave her to do was never very interesting or That's worthwhile true. She either. She always worked in jitters. Or, yeah. I mean, it's not even called jitters. There's something C -C else. CC jitters. Oh, fuck that, dude. <laughs> that is like siffy. It's just like, it's so ugly. Why would you ever do that, guys? Um, yeah. But yeah, the, there were the obligatory iris scenes in every single episode because she has to have something to do in every single episode. But it was rarely interesting stuff. It was like, okay, well, I'm going to follow up a story. I'm going to interview the Flash. And I'm going to misunderstand about the Flash. I'm going to have a new potential love interest. Oh, I'm going to have a spat with my boyfriend. I'm angry at my dad. Yeah, it was a lot of stuff like that. And luckily, and I don't know if she's taken more of a backseat or if it's just because I guess they've let her in on all the secrets now. So she has nothing left to be pissed off and offended about or what. But she's settled down she's not a detestable character anymore like she had been and i've gotten over my problems but that may it may be just because they brought in a more detestable character <laughs> and so now when iris does something you're like oh well uh, sure at I, least I guess, she's not wally yeah, at least she's not wally because oh my gosh wally west is the least likable character 
on the Flash, and that includes on television, <laughs> who killed Barry's mother. <laughs> yes, yeah, she. Oh, he is just the worst. There's even less likable about him. He's never once done anything worthwhile or made you think, oh, yeah, well, this guy's not so bad. And we know, again, just like Iris is going to end up with Flash in the end and be, they're going to be married and all this stuff, Wally West is, he was the Flash. Somehow he's going to end up with super speed and being a superhero. I can't see it happening. He's a piece <laughs> of crap. The only thing he could be is a new super speedy supervillain. He's just awful. Every time he appears on screen, I'm like, oh, great. Another scene with him, and he's just like, eh, I'm offended by uh, whatever it is that's going on here. Can't believe you guys would try and make me deal with this. Why don't you? I gotta go. He's the, you were gone from my whole life, for, and now you expect me to like you? And t trust you, and oh, you can't tell me where to go. You're my father now. He's like, oh, I don't know you. Oh, you know what? You're not. He, Barry's not blood like you are. You can't. He can't talk to me. And he's just like, whoa, guys. It's like every single awful thing about this gener, the young people in this generation. They throw on this character. You know, his cynicism and his world weariness, and just you know, his. He's got no sense of humor, and he likes cars and technology and he's got daddy issues and he wouldn't go visit his mom when she was dying and he he feels threatened by Barry even though he openly dislikes his biological father and it just oh he's a douche oh and plus he emulates the Fast and the Furious movies <laughs> it's just all sorts of it's just awful racer. awful things and yeah there's this one episode where Barry stepped. I mean, how do we, just Joe? I'm going to say where Joe asks <laughs> Barry to help Wally with his science project or whatever. I don't know. I because I don't get the impression that Wally goes to school or has ever gone to school. <laughs> but let's pretend for this episode that he does have a, an assignment that he goes for school. So Barry is helping him, he's doing it for him. And holy cow, Wally just throws it in his face. And he's like, no, I didn't come here for you to do it for me. Meanwhile, <laughs> Barry has glimpsed another parallel universe and lost his stepfather in that. Or his he's lost Joe in that. And he's, he's seen this other flesh murdered before his eyes. And he knows that he's left an entire world in the hands of his new arch nemesis, who is way more powerful than him. And then Barry has to deal with this crap, too. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's another one of those things where it's like, do the writers want us to hate him? Because I hate him. Or do they not know what they want to do with him? Are they that inept of writers? Uh, yeah, I wonder, Some you know, like TV shows, they are, you know, you talk about the writers. They have like a room full of them, you know. They don't just have a writer um for a tv show you know they they have a group of them and they'll split the scripts so you're writing episode one you're two you're three etc um but we're all a team so we're all going to be on the same page what you do is going to affect what i do what i do i'm going to let you know so that we don't contradict each other right and like the retreat that we talked about for marvel you know they they have meetings and they plan the stuff out and they work out you know how things are going to go and then just the minutia goes to you know okay you're writing this episode so the guy actually puts the pen to paper and does it but it's all kind of already planned before he sits down to do so and then you have the showrunner who uh, generally they have like the last pass on everything so they'll read the the final draft and then they'll go through and add their bit and change this and add in a little line or whatever fix stuff that's screwed up because they have the big picture in mind right and so i wonder if maybe like they have a certain guy who's in charge of certain characters and so you know they they send him past everybody and uh, i i write flash's line so i always make sure that he talks this way and then 
some a-holes like, well, I do Wally West, so I'm going to make them more pissed off here about something, and I don't know <laughs> how that works. Sorry, let, let me just pretend. Now, you know that my aspiration was to be a writer, a, a, a writer that made movie, You're but... Running. If I got hired to work on The Flash, the first thing I would do is I would raise my hand and say, guys, if you'll only let me do one thing, this is what I want you to let me do. Portal opens from Earth 2 again. The Wally West from that universe comes to our universe. The Wally West from our universe becomes a villain. <laughs> and we've got a new Wally West with a totally different personality who's a likable guy, who loves his dad, who just wants to help Iris and everything, who thinks Barry's a cool guy and we should hang out together. And maybe this guy is the guy that gets the superpowers and becomes a Kid Flash, all right? <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, I hate him so, so much. And I, so much that I wonder, is it intentional? In the same way that we talked about Jessica Jones' many, many failings and weaknesses that make it difficult to embrace her, difficult to get close to her, difficult to really know her. All that stuff was intentional because we wanted to have a character that's just, you know, what would this do to you to have all of these disadvantages and all that stuff? But uh, yeah, I'd, I fear that Wally West is just bad writing. And, and you know what? Maybe the actor is a shit too. Yeah. They're trying to make him have issues that maybe he's going to rise above or something like that. But yeah, they're doing such a poor job of it that I don't care if he rises above him. I want him to be hurt. I want him to run afoul of Zoom. But otherwise, we've gone on forever. We, we, we'd we'll, we'll split this into about two. this like crazy, but Flash is a good show. It's entertaining and fun, really fun. That's one of the things that this show definitely has going for it. Even way more than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sometimes goes into fun. I mean, you got Hunter, who's a pretty fun character, and uh, Fitz and Simmons, who have been fun at times. But... For the most part, they're really pretty serious over there. There's not a lot of horsing around, which is what Flash has a ton of. And I just love it. I love the character of Cisco, who can see the light side of just everything. And he's never dour and down, even when he runs into his Earth 2 clone, who's a bad guy. He's a fun character. And, you know, you put him with... With uh, Barry, who's also, you know, he's he's just, he's dorky and uh, goofy and stuff like that. But he's he's fun. He's, he's someone you can root for. He's someone you can like. And uh, there's several other characters that are really likable and fun. And there's Patty Spivet. <laughs> yeah, can we talk about Patty Spivet sure. just for a second? So she was the love interest they brought in in season two. With, uh, guys... The worst name. <laughs> I, mean, I understand that she's from the comics and that, and so it's a little bit forgivable, but not a lot We've forgivable. We've talked because about the bad names on, like the bug-eyed bandit and so forth. They we just have... go whole hog with the comic bad names. Right, but Patty Spivet is a totally different <laughs> level. That's just a terrible... I mean, every time... Hey, it's not Diggle. <laughs> well, see, I, I kind of really just want to talk about this Patty Spivet thing because you and I, we would talk every Monday and usually we had seen a flash and we would talk about it. And I really liked this girl. There was some interesting stuff going on, but I know that your kids fudging hated her and <laughs> just one they of them. arbitrarily kicked her off the show. I mean, so arbitrarily that it was just like, holy crap. What, did she get pregnant? Did she have a falling out with the executive producer? Did she get signed to be a star of some other show? It's like, well, we had to get her out of here right now. She's doing a movie right now. And your kid or kids actually cheered when she left the show. And I I just scratched my head because A, I liked her. And I, I liked her a hell of a lot more than I did Iris as a love interest. You know uh -huh. what I mean? She was just kind of a cool, decent character, and she was torn apart by the secrets and lies, you know, the, the Lana Lang syndrome and all that stuff. And so she gets a job offer, 
in some other city and she decides to go or something. I, I don't she even know. She went remember. to CSI school. Oh, yeah. Who gives a crap? I think she may come back in future seasons and I'm be sure a CSI won't. partner with Barry. I highly doubt it. There was a reason they got rid of her as, as expediently as they did. And I don't know what it was unless it was somebody asked your kids what they thought of her. But <laughs> at the very last minute, you know, he decides to open up to her and tell her that she's the Flash but not ask her to stay it's like and and then she's gone and i felt bad and you know what it's weird i hadn't had a, i haven't had a lot of girlfriends i was just like wow th- is this how romance ends where it's just <laughs> this arbitrarily and it's like there's not really any room because she's just like Barry, i'm going to just lay it out here this is what i want i want you to be honest and i want you to tell me what is going on and I'm giving you this one chance. And I, in fact, it may be that she figured out he was the fudge and flash and said, just yeah, say said, that I'm right. You're the flash. Say that Tell I'm the I'm flash right. and I won't go. I won't move away. I'll stay here. I'll like hold your hand, you know, when we go to the movies I'll, or whatever <laughs> fucking romance. I'll actually. wash your, your flash suits for you. Yeah, that's right. She should, <laughs> it, I'll be your sidekick. And he wouldn't do it. And I it was one of those where it's just like he won't do it because the writers say he won't do it why what's going on because are we and I asked you this after that episode aired are we supposed to just long for Barry and Iris to get together because that ship has sailed I don't give a crap about Barry Byrus and yeah that's the that's the, yeah, the Bennifer name yeah, for him I don't give a crap about it and okay we go into Earth 2 and Barry and Iris are married, but he's not the Barry we know. He's some pseudo Barry nerd yeah. guy with none of the sense of humor and bow tie wearing Barry. Uh, yeah, bow tie <laughs> bandit Barry. Bullcrap. And I just, yeah, I, I guess that's what it is, is that we're supposed to, I, I, I'm supposed to be 20 years younger than I am and just wish they'd get together for a, a single two-part episode they did get together sort of because it's a parallel universe and all this stuff yay happiness and time and, travel they had the time travel episode too where he confessed to her and she said so oh I, great i, I, I accept love you, you back, and i yeah. love you and then he time traveled back and that went away and then she didn't like him yeah but well, well that was a solid episode and they had me going and we talked about that in a previous yeah. that gets my goat but i don't know if you have seen there was the most recent episode I have seen is another time travel episode. And Barry travels back to a season one episode and interacts with the same characters played by the same actors playing earlier versions of themselves. And it was riveting. In fact, it should have been a two part episode. It should have been a two hour episode because it was so cool to see him go back to 2014 and the things that he has learned and the things that he knows that the Barry in 2014 didn't know. Have you seen this episode? I have not. This must be a but new like, one since their hiatus. But Harrison Wells is still in the wheelchair. And he, he, as far as, as we know, he's still crippled and all that stuff. And we don't, every, all the characters think that he's good. And, oh my gosh, I just... I was I, my imagination was just captured by this episode. I, I've, it's, it's sort of a Back to the Future two kind of thing where you go and revisit an earlier adventure from a different point of view, and Barry is warned: don't do this, don't go back in time, don't mess with time continuum, time stream, and all that stuff because there will be repercussions. And what if you affect something that changes and there's a ripple and you know it destroys all of this this reality? And Barry because he did it in the season finale of the first season, and it only opened up a vortex that should have killed millions of people, decides he's going to do it again. And Eobard Thawne, this villain from the first season, recognizes immediately that this is not Barry Allen, that he knows. And I was just like, oh, that is so cool. I loved that, 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 that they could do this. And and remind us a couple of things that was going on early in the first season that have long since been tossed out and all that stuff. Anyway, that's that's something you still have to experience. Uh, so, you know, you're in for a treat on that episode, but you will probably feel, as I did, that it would have been better served longer with a two-part episode because Barry knocks out the 2014 Barry. Mm-hmm. And then later, 2014 Barry 
comes back and they have a, their little confrontation. But that could have been a much bigger deal with him trying to convince and, you know, there being two berries and, and anyway, fun stuff. And I've been watching Arrow, but I'm years behind everybody else, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying Arrow. And I have seen a episode from the fourth season because it was a crossover with The Flash. But I sort of wish I hadn't seen it because it gives away all sorts of stuff that's coming for me. Well, I'll have to uh, try and watch Arrow at some point, too. I uh, didn't get into Arrow because the little that I saw of it when my kids would watch it was always like, I don't know, overly brooding, overly serious, too Batman-esque. It is Batman, the series, yeah. But it, I, I like, I mean, I, I don't think there has been a Batman series. No, nope. so just I, Gotham. There was a, a Adam yeah. West Batman series. I know you like that one a lot. We won't go into that one, though, because that's not recent. No, but I think you should watch it, and I would look forward to having conversations with you on that. But uh, one other show that's been going is this Legends of Tomorrow, which is a spinoff of both Flash and Arrow, although mostly The Flash. Have you watched that? I watched episode one and episode two, and I think that was about all... I wanted to see a bit. <laughs> I watched nothing at all, and I think that's about all I wanted yeah. to see. I don't know what it was about that, but it just didn't appeal to me. It was like supposed to be a Justice League light. See, DC is the opposite of Marvel. Uh, there is no... The, the television properties and the movie properties are not connected. They don't even try and say they are. They don't pretend like they are in the way that they do in Marvel, where they're like, oh, yeah, the Battle of New York did this with throwaway lines or anything. They're just completely separate. And so this Legends of Tomorrow show is them basically trying to put together a Justice League out of what they got. Or maybe you could call it the Justice Society of America, which was always like the subpar Justice League, because they didn't even put Flash and Arrow into it who are the two big characters, unless you count Supergirl. She's sort of in the same universe, but kind of, sort of not. They didn't put those into the... They just took all their secondary characters, like Hot Girl, who they introduced in Flash this year. Weirdly, they put in, like, two bad guys on the team. It was like, yeah, we'll Captain Cold put and Captain the Cold. Wave, right? Yeah, they put those guys in as part of this team. Firestorm. Firestorm, right? They have him on there who came from The Flash, and they have a White Canary who comes from Arrow. I, I don't know DC well enough to know if White Canary is a thing. I do know the Black Canary. But uh, anyways, they put all these people together. And they travel to and, time. <laughs> and, or do they travel to different universes? And they added Doctor Who in <laughs> to take them from one place to another to try and stop Randall Savage. Vandal right? Savage. Oh, Vandal Savage. Sorry, Randall Savage is the wrestler. Oh, wait, no, he isn't. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> they're trying to stop Vandal Savage, the wrestler, from destroying humanity in the future taking over the world and so they go back in time to like the 70s and stuff are there superheroes in the 70s uh, that they run into not in episode one or two. Oh, okay uh, except for vandal savage who was in the past right but he's effectively immortal right he's, a, he's, he's like a neanderthal or a cro magnon who's still alive yeah, he's like unto Hawk Girl and Hawk Man, uh, although different because they, I think, just keep re resurrecting, being born again, uh, reincarnating, reincarnating. I guess is the right word for that. And then they grow up, and then they realize who they are, and now they're Hawk Girl and Hawk Man again. They did kill off Hawk Man. Oh, spoiler alert! In episode one, they kill off Hawk Man, and Hawk Girl has to go on by herself. But. Um, is she as unlikable as she was on The Flash? Probably. I didn't want to keep watching the show, so she wasn't likable enough for me to be like, yeah, I should keep watching. Well, what was there for you to like? What? What? I don't know. Why did you it go was... on to the second episode was there? Because my kids... My kids like it okay. Huh. They kept watching. At least some of them did. It was funny because... 
my daughter who really disliked Patty Spivet. <laughs> Why? Uh, she was totally fine. She liked Legends of Tomorrow. She'll often just be like, meh, we're watching Flash again. Uh, okay. But she kept saying, let's watch Legends of Tomorrow. And we're all like, no, we're behind on Agent Carter. We're like, if we don't watch some, they're going to go off of Hulu and then we'll be screwed. And she'd be like, oh, fine. And she would leave. But if Legends of Tomorrow was on, she wanted to watch it, which I don't understand at all because Legends of Tomorrow was not interesting to me in any way. Because of the characters? Because of the stories? Yeah, the what? characters were not ones that I cared about. They were like the semi, you know, the, the characters that should appear in one episode of Flash and then, you know, not come back for eight or nine or ten episodes. Wait, what about Superman playing Iron Man? Is he on the show? Oh, right. Yeah, he was there too. The Adam, I think. Adam. <laughs> I almost said Adam Ant. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something different, but also a combination of the Atom and Ant Man. Yes. Uh, they did have XTC versus Adam Ant. <laughs> I, I, but I just I remember seeing him. I, he was probably on the Flash more than once. But at the first time that the Atom showed up, I was just like, "Is that Iron Man? Why, how do they have Iron Man on this show?" <laughs> and then he took off his helmet. Like, and wait, it was no, Superman. Superman. And I I was like, is this 60s LSD flashbacks, guys? Am I seeing what I'm seeing? What the crap and he's is going like, on? That's not Superman. He's just, you only know him from that movie. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. You're right. But for a moment there, I was just like, what? Oh. I was like, what did you put into my drink? <laughs> Because I'm seeing some weird shit, man. <laughs> Wallpaper's I'm, talking to I'm me, man. Freaking out, man. I'm you freaking... gotta talk me down. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they're all don't do there. drugs, kids. And unfortunately, it doesn't help. They, yeah, like I was saying, they're all the side characters that you don't really care about enough. And trying to make them the main characters doesn't work. Like, how much am I going to care about Professor Stein? And. You know, whether he's previous self from 1975 or whenever it was that they went back to is going to get together with his wife or not. <sighs> was it a different actor playing Professor Stein yeah. in the 70s or was Victor? Oh, okay. It was a different actor. It was a young man. But yeah, it, it didn't work for me. I don't know. Maybe it's awesome. And I just didn't give it long enough. And that's one of those things that happens with a lot of shows. We, we talked about that with Constantine came on last year and I watched the first episode and I was like, huh, well, you know, I've got other things to watch. And then Constantine was gone. <laughs> it was canceled. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I, that's it. I guess I, I had my window it. It closed. And there's a lot of shows also that just they don't come into their own until, uh, you know, they've, they've gone along a little bit. And I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was that, you know. When it first started out, it took a little while for you to really get into it, to really care. When they finally got to that Captain America tie-in and, and it got really good, you know, you were grateful that you stuck with it. But for a while, it was just like, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to stick with this. Well, see, that's and how I was with Arrow. Quit. Is I watched, like, the first four episodes back in... 2013 or whenever it started and it just it didn't work for me i didn't like what was going on if i had just stuck around like two or three more episodes i would have been hooked i would have been like oh hey they changed a couple of things this is great but i didn't yeah i didn't uh, i didn't stick around and i suffer for it now yeah and for all i know that's what a, a legends of to almost said agents of tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> that's what legends of tomorrow could be. For all I know, I mean, maybe it's turned great, but I'll probably never know because I don't think that I will ever feel the need to go back to it. There's just too many of those shows. Uh, yeah, like we were talking about all those Netflix shows, all the DC shows. Uh, this is something that I heard just. I think yesterday I was looking... Okay, I was reading a thing where they were talking about the in, the integration between the movies and the TV show. And uh, somebody in one of the comments was saying, Oh, yeah, you know, I, 
I know they say they're in the same universe, but I still think of like TV being a separate beast from movies, ABCs, TV shows being a separate beast from Netflix, being a separate beast from the movies even. And then he said, and Cloak and Dagger, you know, it remains to be seen where that one falls. And I went, what? And so I looked that up and yeah, they, there's a TV show in production or in the works for the comic book property called Cloak and Dagger. And it's not that 80s movie. Um, With Henry Thomas and Dabney Coleman? Yes. Never heard of it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a Marvel property where there's cloak and there's dagger, and dagger has the power of throwing knives of light, right? He's got light powers, and he's got cloak darkness has powers, like yeah. a darkness within his cloak that he can use to engulf people and transport them or teleport them or something like that. It, it's like a love story too, which I guess is something that we're going to be treated to as well as the rest of it uh that sounds interesting it's going on what was once the abc family channel um they have a new name now and i don't even know what it is i used to know it's a weird name but i can't remember anymore so th that one is going to be added to the mix too and i'm interested i know very little about cloak and dagger dude i'd like it so much better though if Cloak and Dagger were introduced on Luke Cage as part of the same effed up government experiment that gives Luke his powers, also gives these two homeless kids their powers, and that way it's just like, oh yeah, so Luke got impenetrable skin, but look what these kids got. Oh, that's effed up. And, and you know, of course we can have a fourth person that becomes a supervillain because of the experiments too. I just, yeah, I want it all to be in the same universe. And like the guy said in his comment, it remains to be seen what will happen with that. And maybe that's even possible. Who knows? I find it unlikely. But yeah, highly unlikely. Again, it's just another option. There's so many options out there. And so you can't waste time. At least someone like me can. I mean, my kids could. My kids, <laughs> that's all they do. They just sit and they watch Netflix on their damn phones all day long. No, they watch YouTube people yeah, playing video games they, they all even day long. do that they just i mean they just go into their rooms and they just hide in there and they have all day to do whatever the hell they want i guess you know they have all that time because i'm doing all their chores for them while they sit in there doing that and me you know me and my wife spend all our time trying to keep our house from crumbling to dust etc while they you know fiddle and roam burns but, yeah, I don't have that time because that's what I'm doing. You know, I've got a four-year-old that I'm running around trying to keep him from lighting things on fire and pissing all over the ground or something. Maybe he was trying to put out the fire. <laughs> yeah, there you go. A little, a little bit of a... I don't have the time for everything. So if something isn't pleasing, like Legends of Tomorrow, then I just gotta, I have to just let it go and see what else there is. And the last show is Supergirl. Yeah, the other day I went over to my mom's. She was watching The Flash, and Barry was on there, and he says, I'm Barry Allen, I'm The Flash. Haven't you ever heard of me? What about Green Arrow? What? And he starts naming off all these characters, and I was like, I, I've seen all the episodes of The Flash. What the? F and it was Supergirl he was talking to, and I was just <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is that crossover episode. Weird. Oh, wow, I'd kind of like to see this. But would it mean I have to go back and watch all the episodes of Supergirl I missed? And that, my friend, is too high a it's price to pay. too much to ask. Yeah, we watched, I mean, we did an episode about Supergirl when we watched the pilot. And we talked about the show when we talked about what we hoped would happen. And then, like I said earlier, CBS, they've got their own streaming thing. They don't want to play with Hulu. And I don't know how that's working for them, if it's doing well, if they have enough inventory. I don't, if, I don't even know if it's a paid thing or if you can just see the shows for free. But because they weren't on Hulu, I didn't see Supergirl. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have anyways because my kids didn't seem too interested in it. So I don't know if it would have made it into our rotation of shows that we watch together. But Supergirl is more attractive to me. 
than Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, hugely. Supergirl is a character A that I've heard of outside of the fact that they had a guest appearance, you know, fighting the bug-eyed bandit. <laughs> so I care about Supergirl already just to begin with. But yeah, I mean, I, I've heard and I have a friend that I work with who watches it. He's been watching it all along, and he says that it kind of started out a little slow like a lot of shows do, but it's picking up and gets better and better as it goes along, and he said it's just gotten really good. It's the show that he always wants to go back to, and, you know, like we said when we did our <laughs> Superman v Batman episode, the best Superman movie that's been done was Captain America, and... Apparently, the best Superman going right now is Supergirl because she is what you want Superman to be in this show. And they're not afraid to do that and they're not afraid to go there and, you know, make her be what a, what Supergirl, Superman, whatever should be. I've heard it's really good and I'd really like to see it. Maybe I'll try and look into this whole streaming thing that they have. Maybe it's just one of those things that I just need to download onto my Roku player or Apple TV or whatever, and I'll be able to see it. But I can't really recommend it because I haven't really seen anything other than just that pilot, which was good. But based on the opinion of this friend of mine, who I respect, his opinion is good. It's usually really uh, solid and well thought out. So I would recommend Supergirl on that. Well, I'd like to watch the Flash crossover episode, but I don't know if I'll be lost or unhappy if I only watched that one. Yeah, I saw the pilot, and I haven't seen any since then, and I don't have the excuse of no way to watch it. I just have the excuse of time. I don't have time, or I haven't... It's not a priority to me. It hasn't risen to the level yet. And we talked about that when we did our Supergirl episode, that we hoped that the show would last, A, and that if it lasted, that they would be able to do the crossovers with the other shows in the universe. We knew that they'd put it in the universe, supposedly. We're hoping that, that would be possible, and now here we are. They had a crossover episode, and apparently the deal was, we'll do a crossover episode, but you appear on our show, not the other way around. <laughs> Which I guess you can see CBS saying to the CW. CW, you almost said the WB. <laughs> yeah, we're dating ourselves again. <laughs> but, like today I, I made some reference. I was like, you know, who's a super hot chick that's famous? And I was like, well, we'll like Britney Spears. And you're just like, oh my gosh, Grandpa. <laughs> Britney Spears? And I was like, what? 15 years too late, sir. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's really cool that that has materialized. Here we are, and it's not even the end of the first season. And they've gone there, which is cool. And I'm betting that next season they'll be able to just take it a, a little further. Well, I like it when they do a crossover episode where the first half is one show and the second half is the other show, and they make you... Watch <laughs> right. the other show that you don't normally watch. Yeah, they did that with Flash and Arrow at least once. I love that they do that, and I, ho I hope they continue it and take it even further. And, you know, we finally see Supergirl appear in Central City. What is the name of her city? Coast City? or I don't know. All of them are something city. They never just a name. It's never just Newark. <laughs> That's it's true. Something City. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't Star know. City. Star Sitting, City. Central Star City. City is Starling City. Yeah. Yeah, they changed it and down Coast to just Star. City. It seems is like there's Coast an edge City. city. The Coast, Coast, Coast City is, is where Green, is Lantern, Green Lantern, is. Lantern is. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what Supergirl's city was, but it's something city. It doesn't really matter. They're dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I guess that shows the marvel in me, but I think it's so dumb with all the stupid made-up cities. Every single hero has their own little made-up city. Why couldn't they just be in Houston or Chicago or Kansas City, Denver? I don't know. Seattle, hello. Stop naming cities, please. Jacksonville. Please, stop it. <laughs> anyway, we've Charlotte. talked for, a, please, a long, long time on this thing. Hopefully David feels like he's gotten his money's worth. You know, actually, the, 
it, an embarrassment of riches, isn't it, David? We're just still talking. And he's like, oh, jeez. Like, oh, I didn't even want to know about these shows. Email those guys again as long as I, oh, I, unfollow. All I wanted was Expanse and Jessica Jones. Why are they talking about this other crap? Uh, I, I do pity you, David, <laughs> having to listen to this. But uh, that, that, yes, a very long That Gets My Goat in the can for your whistening pleasure. Yeah. The cool thing is, you know, there's so much. That's the good thing about it's a long that gets my goat because there is so much available. Hopefully one of these things appeal to you and you're enjoying life by watching it week in and week out. Because that's cool. There's so, you know, there was never that. Like the most amazing time for a comic book nerd would have been like late 70s, early 80s when you had Wonder Woman and the Hulk. Both going at the same time. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And then you went years with nothing but like the Dukes of Hazard and Knight the Rider fall guy. and the Fall Guy and TJ Hooker and stuff. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a long time before you got anything that you would really care about. Well, um, for genre fans, yeah, there was few and far between. But now every single network has at least one show for geeks and that sort of thing. You know, there's. They brought heroes back, and I have no idea if that was successful or not. There's, you know, the Sleepy Hollow show was on that uh, some people still watch. X-Files Grimm is still on. Once Upon a Time is still on. X Files, yeah, it came on. Like call, they called it like season ten or something <laughs> like that. A little mini series um, version of that. There's just it's more and more, just thing after thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a cool time to to be a nerd. So live it up, nerds. Yeah, you heard me. You're a nerd. Uh, yeah, enjoy it. Because, uh, I don't know, probably the pendulum will swing back at some point. So love it while you can. Yeah, reality shows are going to come back oh, one day. No. And every network is going to have five shows that's exactly the same. And they're scripted, but they'll pretend that they're not. <laughs> Anyhow, I will uh, hopefully not be podcasting when that happens. Yeah. All right, everybody. We're going to say goodbye. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Anklevich. Oh, and I'm Rich Outfield. Good night. What, no lame quote kind of My name thing? is Barry Allen, and I'm the fastest man alive. <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under Corrated Cardman's Alvagesen, non-commercial, no deliveries. 3.0 license, but that will be our little secret. What was his name, Chris? David Caffrey? Let me uh, confirm. Can neither confirm nor deny that his name was David Caffrey. Yeah, confirm this. <laughs> that was the worst, wimpiest burp ever. Two hours and 11 minutes? Yeah.